Hey, you guys, how are you? How are you? How are you? And welcome to my podcast, Nonprofit Nuggets with Jennifer Yarbrough, as well as my YouTube channel. Hey, family. Hey, family. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you guys for coming in. I know we have also guests from my TikTok community. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. So listen, I wanted to jump right into it. For those of you all who are new to me, my name is Jennifer. I am your nonprofit expert. Over 37 years of experience helping organizations put together plans, strategies, systems, and tools so that your organization can be sustainable. Uh, for those of you all who have been following me for a long time, you guys hear me talk a lot about sustainability. You hear me talk a lot about your nonprofit being a business. You hear me talking a lot about the uh, opportunities that your organization has to really be a thriving organization. I first wanna begin by introducing to you um, my new guide. This is a guide that was created for those of you who have been struggling, for those of you who have been feeling challenged by your nonprofit journey, for those of you who've been saying, Jen, I want to start my nonprofit, but I'm stuck. Jen, I've started my nonprofit, but I'm paying for everything out of my pocket. Jen, I started my nonprofit. I got my 501c3 uh, paperwork from the IRS, but now I don't know what to do, right? Um, I'm speaking to you. Again, those of you who are joining me here on the YouTube channel, I want to say thank you for joining. Please hit the like and subscribe button, um, as well as leave a comment. If there's anything that I'm saying that is resonating with you, I'd love to hear your feedback. And for those of you that are listening on the podcast, thank you guys so much for your comments, for your emails, um, for you all reaching back out to me, just to let me know that you're listening and that you are being inspired by the work that we're talking about. Um, I created this guide with you in mind. I created this guide for those of you that say, Jen, I want to start my nonprofit. Jen, I have started my nonprofit. Jen, I am stuck. Jen, I'm paying for everything out of my pocket and I just don't know what to do. I created this guide for you. All right. This guide is designed to be a one-stop shop. All right. This guide is designed to really help you navigate the nonprofit landscape. This guide is created to give you the clarity and the knowledge and the information that you need so that you can not only start your nonprofit organizations, but that you understand how to grow it how to sustain it, how to get the support for it, and how to cause your organization to thrive. Now, what does that mean? That means you know how, right? I talked to many of you and you're like, Jen, I don't. I don't know how to put together a fundraising plan. I don't know how to get board members. I don't know how to raise funds for my nonprofit organization. It's all of the I don't knows that has you stuck, right? It's the I don't knows. I don't know what to do first, Jen. I don't know how to talk to donors. I don't know, um, you know, how to get funding. I don't know how to put together a budget. It's all the I don't knows that have you stuck. And so this guide was created to give you the answers to the questions that you might have to clarify some of the areas of the nonprofit space that may be a little fuzzy, right? And so this was created just for you in the guide, in the guide, right? That you all who are on the YouTube can see right over my shoulder. Um, the guide is a 52 page deep dive into what is the nonprofit? What is the nonprofit? What's the definition of a nonprofit? And all of the components that are going to help your organization really thrive, okay? So let's get into it. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so what's in the guide is first a greeting from me. And then let's talk about what's in the outline. I know that you all, this is backwards, right? So just bear with me. <laughs> For those of you guys who are on the YouTube, I'm gonna tell you exactly what it says, okay? The first thing is the introduction to this guide. Again, this guide is... Uh, created to help you navigate, navigate the process from startup to funding, as well as sustainability. There's even a section in here that talks about your succession plan. Those of you that are listening to me now, I want you to know 
that you are not alone. I want you to know that there are answers to your questions in one place. I want you to know that you no longer have to try to spend days, weeks, and months trying to figure this whole thing out on your own, okay? This guide is gonna take you all the way through the process. So let me tell you what's in the guide and let me tell you how to get it, all right? You can go to bit.ly, bit.ly backslash nonprofit startup guide. Nonprofit startup guide. I'm gonna say that again. bit.ly backslash nonprofit startup guide, okay? This guide, again, was created with you in mind. Let's talk about what's in it. What's in it? In um in the introduction, it talks about the importance of the, the nonprofit in the world. It talks about the purpose of this, this ebook. And then in chapter one, we talk about understanding what is the nonprofit. It's the definition of the nonprofit, the different types of nonprofits, the 501c3, the 501c4 etc. There are many others, okay? And then it talks about the importance of your mission, your vision, your purpose, and your values. And I'm going to talk about more about that as we go through the guide, all right? But I want you to understand that everything that's in this guide is designed, is intentionally to define, to clarify. Even in many cases, I give you examples of each of these areas just so that you can relate it to what it is that you need to know, and then ultimately what it is that you need to do, all right? I even put in here some scripts where all you got to do is drop in your, your organization's name and your mission, and then the rest of the sentence is done for you, okay? So here we go. Um, in chapter two, we talk about your legal and regulatory considerations. We talk about the incorporation process. I want you guys to understand that starting your nonprofit organization does not begin or end with filing that 1023 form, right? Starting your, your organization is one, understanding that it's a business, also understanding how are you going to fund this business? How are you going to sustain this business? Where does revenue come for this business? How do you support this business? How do you grow, right? Your program and your efforts. I think in my last podcast, I went into a lot of detail about the business of the nonprofit, right? There's the for-profit business and then there's the not-for-profit. We're in the not-for-profit space, but we also need to be able to generate revenue in order for us to operate, right? Right, right, okay. So in chapter two, we talk about the incorporation process. We talk about your tax exempt status and the IRS requirements. We talk about compliance and your state regulations, as well as board governance and responsibilities. I think this is really important because a lot of people say to me, Jen, what's the role of the board? Or you put your mother, your brother, your dog, your catch a fish on your board. They don't know how to help your organization grow, right? You may not really be familiar with the roles and the responsibilities and the opportunities of which each of those uh, jobs are on the board. And so there's that, again, that lack of knowing, lack of knowing of who are the people that we should be looking for who can really um, manage or perform in these various roles, but you got to know what the roles are first, not just the roles of being on the board, but also the roles of those who are on the board in their, um, in their role out in the community, right? In their role out in the community. So we talk about in chapter three, developing your organization's strategic plan. We talk about setting goals. We talk about your program development and your evaluation. Why is that important? Their evaluation is what supports, is what explains, and what clarifies, and what encourages your donors and supporters to believe in the work that you're doing. The evaluation is the proof that what you do really works, all right? So being able to really put together your program elements. What are programs, Jen? Program is a group of activities that are specifically and strategically designed to produce a result. The result of what you do is what your funders uh, fund. Let me say that again. The result of what you do, not the activities. The activities that you do are strategically designed to produce a result. The result is what the funders are funding, right? And your evaluation is further proof right? Clarifying information to the donor and the funder that what you're doing really works, okay? So program development, 
and program evaluation. <clears throat> Remembering that your program is not just the activities, but it is the result of those activities, which is what is of interest to your donors, your funders, and your supporters, all right? So I explain what all that means. In chapter four, we talk about fundraising basics. You guys hear me talk about eight streams of revenue, right? That your organization lacking funding is again, based on what I don't know. Jen, I don't know how to raise the money. Jen, I don't know where the money comes from, right? So there are eight streams of revenue. There are more. In this guide, I give you 10, but I generally talk about the eight because it's easy to remember, right? What are the eight? Individuals. These are your regular donors, your monthly donors, your major donors, your regular donors, okay? Then we have corporations and businesses. These are your support or your sponsorship. We have in kind. We have uh, partnerships and collaborations. We have events. We have grants. Grants are great, but grants are not going to fund 100% of your program, right? It's only going to fund about 30%. Then we have program fees, and then we have um, uh, products and services. In this guide, I give examples of where do you find in-kind contributions or what are the in-kind contributions. In this guide, I talk about how and who you want to consider developing partnerships and uh, collaborations with, okay? And then I walk you through that process. We talk about creating a fundraising plan. OK, I often tell you guys that it's not the money that you're lacking. It's the plan on how to raise the money. Right. There are three reasons that organizations don't have funding. One, I don't have a plan to raise a gen. Two, I don't know how to raise it. And three, it hasn't been a priority of the organization. You are focused more on the activities of your work and not the funding and the continuation of the support of your work financially. OK, and while you think that you know, factoring in events and possibly a grant, those are not the only streams of revenue. And those two streams of revenue really only comprise less than 50% of your total budget revenue capacity. So you just want to make sure that you are spending the right time doing the right things so that you can get the right results, right? So doing the right things includes making sure that you are utilizing the various streams of revenue. Again, if you would want this guide, this guide, I am offering a free bonus training, all right? You either get... Um, the fundraising, you get grant writing, or you get the nonprofit startup. So everyone who gets this guide, you get an opportunity to get a bonus training, okay? Those trainings are almost two hours long. Some In, in some cases, they're over two hours long, but it really is the explanation. You know, when we're in school, when you're in school and you're learning a different subject matter, you have a book, right? You have a book, and then you have the teacher explaining what's in the book. This is your book. And I, through the bonus trainings, are explaining what's in the book, right? So I just want to be able to provide you the coaching information. I want to be able to provide you the clarity. And I want it all to be in one place so that you are able to go to one book, this guide, that is going to really be able to help you uh, determine and identify the things that you need to know about in your nonprofit, as well as how to address the areas that you may not know about or that you may not have been aware of. All right. So I'm super excited to be able to share that with you. Um, in the fundraising, we talk about putting together your fundraising plan. We talk about cu cultivating and identifying your prospective donors and your funders, and how do you get the second gift, right? You may have gotten the first gift, but how do you get the second gift? I go into that plan and that strategy to get the second gift. We also cover grant writing tips in this guide. Did I mention that this guide has everything that you need, huh? You guys, please feel free to like, comment, and share. Subscribe also so that you are um, not going to miss any of my future um, podcasts or YouTubes. I really, 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 I'm striving to, um, to get this information out to you, right? And so your likes, your comments, your shares really help uh, push this platform up into the algorithm. And I appreciate your support. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your likes and your shares as well. Thank you guys so very much for that. Chapter five, we talk about the financial management 
of your organization. I often ask people, tell me what your budget is, right? If we don't know what our program costs, then how do we know how much money we need to raise, right? So in this chapter, we talk about budgeting fundamentals. We talk about financial reporting and managing your cash flow, right? Managing your cash flow and fund accounting. In chapter seven, or I'm sorry, six, we talk about marketing and communications, crafting a compelling message. We talk about your branding message. We talk about social media and your online presence. And we talk about public relations strategies. In chapter seven, we talk about human resources and volunteer management. Listen, we talk about everything in here, including huh? how to onboard your volunteers, job descriptions, making sure that everyone understands their role, their responsibilities, and their opportunities in those positions to help the organization grow. In chapter eight, we talk about technology and operations. Chapter nine, we talk about sustainability and growth, okay? We talk about building partnerships and collaborations. We talk about scaling your programs and your program's impact. We talk about the culture of innovation. We even talk about succession planning. When you decide to retire and you wanna leave the organization to someone else, that's explained in here as well, all right? Chapter 10, we talk about resources and further learning so that you have information about books and websites and other places and spaces that you can grow your professional development opportunities. I am super excited that in the month of April, I am gonna be walking all of you that have the guide, everyone that has the guide, throughout the month of April, I am going to be sharing 30 days of fundraising, right? We are going to be raising money together throughout the entire month of April. And those of you that have the guide, you will be invited to join us, okay? You'll be invited to join us. Again, if you would like to get your hands on this guide, along with the bonus, the bonus training, and you get an invitation to come and join me through the month of April, in 30 days of fundraising. The thing about the 30 days of fundraising is that we're gonna be working together to put together your fundraising plan, your fundraising strategies, the actions that you wanna take every single day in order to generate, in order to raise awareness about what your organization does from your prospective donor so that you can, again, generate revenue. I want you guys to know that I'm gonna be walking you through that. But not only that, we're going to be spending 30 days together but I am going to be sharing with you 75 days, 75 days of fundraising strategy, all right? So again, those of you that have this guide, you will be invited into those spaces, into a private group um, with other uh, nonprofit leaders such as yourselves who are also growing and expanding and really reaching for a higher level of sustainability. And it would be awesome if you would be a part of that, all right? So all you have to do is go to bit.ly, bit.ly, bit.ly backslash nonprofit startup guide, nonprofit startup guide. Everyone that gets the guide, everyone that gets the guide will get a free bonus training, okay? It was be a video replay, very comprehensive, deep in detail, either on grant writing, either on fundraising, or either on the nonprofit startup, all right? Again, everything that I'm doing is really trying to help you understand that you're not in this journey by yourself, and you no longer have to guess and make mistakes and start all over again and be frustrated and discouraged, that everything is in one place, very convenient for you, and you have me here to help guide you through the process, okay? Now, I want to talk about, again, further what's in this guide. The purpose of this of this book is to really equip you, equip you with um, understanding, equip you as new leaders, as growing leaders, as leaders who have started and been frustrated and feel like you need to start all over again. This guide is really to help you demystify not only starting the nonprofit, but really how do you manage it? How do you run it? How do you grow it? How do you lead it? How do you raise the presence of your nonprofit organization and your mission and the importance of it in the community from which you serve, right? 
Let's talk about the definition of a nonprofit. What is the definition of the nonprofit? A nonprofit organization, also known as a not-for-profit, is an entity that operates for the purpose other than generating profit, right? So in the for-profit business, the business is in the business for the profit. But what is profit? Profit is over and above the expenses, right? Over and above what it costs to operate is the profit. We're not in it for the profit. Okay. However, every business has to be able to operate. So in the for-profit business, they're in it for the profit, right? Over and above expenses is the profit. What do they do with that profit? They distribute that profit between stakeholders, shareholders, and partners, right? That's what they do with the, the, the money in the for-profit business. In the not-for-profit, we're not in it for the profit, but what is profit? Over and above expenses. This is what it says. It says, um, instead, nonprofits pursue specific missions and objectives aimed at benefiting the public, right? Communities and particular causes. Unlike for-profit businesses, nonprofits do not distribute profits to owners or shareholders. Instead, they reinvest any surplus revenue back into their programs and services to further their mission, right? So in order for us to put back into our program and mission, in order for us to further our mission, we have to know where money comes from. We have to sustain our work. We have to operate, right? Many of you are taking the entire dollar and putting it over in a program, the entire dollar and putting it over into program, right? That's not sustainable. That's not sustainable. It's the organization. It's the organization that really understands how to manage the fundraising, the budgeting, the relationship building, the clarifying of your mission to the people who are not in it right? The people who are your donors and supporters, they're not supporting you because you're a nonprofit. They're supporting you because there is clarity. There is understanding. There is encouragement. There is an inspiration by you achieving your mission, right? So that's the outcome. That's the result of what you do, not the activities of what you do. And again, that's where evaluation comes in, all right? So understanding what you are as a business, and understanding that it's not about the money, right? We're not in it for the profit. We're in it for the as a nonprofit, right? If we were in it for the money, we'd be the for-profit. But our revenue that comes into our organizations that must come into our organization in order for us to operate comes from various streams. I mentioned earlier the eight streams. Now, during my 30-day fundraising challenge, which everyone who has this guide is going to be able to join me on, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be working through, I'm going to be assisting you in the fundraising process, all right? We're going to be meeting weekly for you to get your questions answered. You're not going to have to do this all on your own. I am going to guide you through the entire process, okay, about how to raise money. Where does money come from? What are the messagings? Um, how do you identify your ideal donors? All of those things are explained in this guide, and then I'm going to clarify it during our time together during the month of April. All right, here we go. So then also in here is the different types of nonprofit organizations. You have the 501c3, the 501c4, the 501c6, the 501c7, the 501c19. There's a bunch, all right? So those are all explained here. We talk about your mission, your vision, your purpose. Why is that important? Your mission is not only for the internal conversation. Your mission is really for explanation, inspiration, clarification for those that would be your supporters, right? Your donors, your funders, your contributors. What is a mission? The mission of the organization is its core purpose or reason for existence. Who are you telling that to? You're having that conversation and explanation for the people who don't know what you do, who are not in what you do, right? So your ability to really articulate that. What is the purpose of your organization? Your purpose statement defines the fundamental reasons for your existence. It articulates the core essence and the overarching goal that motivates the organization's work. Let me tell you what that looks like. 
I've also in here in this guide given the examples, all right? I've given great examples for you to follow. This is what it says. What is an example of our purpose statement? And this is what it would sound like when you are in a meeting, right? It would sound like this. Uh, my name is, I'm the executive director of, the purpose of our organization is to provide support and assistance to homeless veterans, empowering them to rebuild their lives with dignity and respect. Our mission is to address the unique needs of homeless veterans by offering shelter, counseling, job training, and access to essential services. Through a comprehensive approach, we strive to help veterans transition from homelessness to stable and independent living. Now, when you're having a meeting and you're able to really clarify, you're able to articulate, you're able to educate, you're able to inspire through your clarity, right? Through your ability to clearly articulate what you do. That does what? It assures the donor. It educates the, 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 the uh, prospective donor. It gives them an understanding of what you do. Now, this is what it sounds like for some of you. Jim, I started my, the purpose of my organization, Jim, is to help people. You know, I just really want to help people, Jim. I just know that this is what I was supposed to do. The Lord gave me this. And, you know, I just feel like, you know, I just feel like I have to do it. And then the tears will start. And then it's, you know, I just am working so hard, you know, I'm doing everything by myself and I just really just need help. You know, I mean, I know that there's so many needs out there and we're just trying to meet all the needs. And, and, um, you know, I just feel like, you know, this work is so important. I went through it, Jen. I know what they're going through. I went through the very same thing. And so I just want to make sure that, you know, I give back. That's why I started. Can you guys hear the difference? For many of you, your struggle in raising money is your inability to clearly articulate what you do, right? Your inability to really show, share, educate, inspire, and inform in clear, concise language. In this guide, I've given you the example. In this guide, I've given you the example, all right? All you have to do is plug and, plug and say, huh? Plug and say, okay? So I've given you the examples here for your vision statement, for your purpose statement, for your mission statement, okay? So that you then are able to confidently and competently go into various meetings and have the conversation, really introduce yourself with clarity and strength. And so that your donors and funders understand what it is that you do. They have the clarity of what you do and they are more likely to more quickly be inclined to give to what you do. But if they don't know what you do, if they're not clear about what it is that you do, they are not gonna be sure or are sure to give you their funds, okay? So again, being able to not only have a mission, but being able to articulate it is key. The next thing that we talk about in the guide are your legal regulations. We talk about your compliance. We talk about drafting of your articles of incorporation. All of that is explained right here in the guide. We talk about roles and responsibilities of the board. We even talk about the roles and responsibilities of you as an executive director, all right? And how that role as the executive director and the role of the board fiduciary is to ensure that your organization has the revenue needed to operate, okay? So all of that is explained right here in the guide. You don't have to guess, you don't have to go anywhere. It's all in one place. There's even questions Questions to ask your prospective board members. Now, I know for many of you, you were rushing so quickly to get that 1023 form, right? You want that form filled out and that form asks for board members. And so you put your mother, your brother, your dog, your cat, your fish, you put their names on those lines. Why? Because you were waiting and wanting to get that piece of paper from the IRS. But now that you have that piece of paper, you've put people on your board who don't know how to be on the board who don't know the roles and responsibilities of a board member. And if you don't know the roles and responsibilities of the board and they don't know the roles and responsibilities of the board, well, who the ding dang devil knows? <laughs> I put it all right here. I even put in here questions to ask prospective board members because I hear all the time, Jen, I need to get new board members. Jen, how do I find board members? Jen, I need board members for my organization. I've put here questions to ask your board members. One of the questions is, why are you interested in serving as a board member for our organization? Why is that an important question to ask? If they can answer that question to you, they can also have that conversation, be able to articulate why the organization means so much to them out in the community, right? If they don't know what to say, 
inside the meeting, they definitely don't know what to say out in the community, all right? So these are questions that are gonna help for you to clarify. How does our mission align with your personal values and beliefs? What personal skills and expertise do you bring that would contribute to the success of our organization? All right. Um, are there any particular areas, it's an example of finance, marketing, legal, where you have expertise? Again, I list about 24 questions, 24 questions to ask per prospective board members. All right. It is criminal. Did you hear what I said? It is criminal to put people on your board and then find out that they can't help you, right? How many of you guys have got board members and then, oh, Jen, I got to change board members. They're not helping me. Could it be that they don't know how to help you? And could it be that you put them on your board not knowing how to pick a board, not just knowing how to get people on your board, but how do you pick the people to get on your board, right? And so that is what this guide is here to clarify. All right, so I put their questions here. I even put questions that your board members should be prepared to answer when they are out in the community. And I put the script right here for you, all right? When they're in a meeting and they're down at the, one of the chamber meetings, right? And they're sitting next to someone who could be a prospective funder. And the funder asks, what does your organization do? I put right here the response. Our organization, plug in the name. We are dedicated to whatever your mission statement is. We, through your program, right? We address these specific areas. I literally have put it right there. All you got to do is put in the sentence or put in the mission statement, put in the name of your organization. Everything is already done for you, right? And I provide how many? I provide 15 questions that are going to equip, that's going to prepare, that's going to assess, help your, your board to be confident and speaking about your organization in the public. Uh, let me see. It says here, um, how do you, let me see, how, la, 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 how does your program impact the community, right? How does your program impact the community? That's a real question, all right? So I put in here the answer, the answer. We are proud of our impact. Over the years, we have highlight the achievement, right? All you got to do is give them what the achievement is and they can then go and say it from there. Our efforts aim to whatever it is that the outcome or the change or the result of your program is, okay? Again, I have given you many examples. You see all these examples right here for those of you guys who are on the YouTube? All of this is yours in your hand. You don't even have to guess, <laughs> You don't even have to guess, honey. I am giving it all to you, okay? If you are interested in getting this guide, go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash nonprofit startup guide, nonprofit startup guide. Everyone who has this guide, you all have an opportunity to a bonus training, all right? A bonus training. That training is either on fundraising, on nonprofit startup, or on grant writing. They're almost two hours long. In some cases, they may be two hours plus, but you get that bonus training with the purchase of this guide for free. In addition to that, you also get 30 days of fundraising with me, okay? That training alone is $169 for that 30-day fundraising training, but I'm also giving that to you for everyone who has this guide, all right? So go to the guide, bit.ly backslash nonprofit startup guide, and let me help you really walk through the process of fundraising, okay? Let's talk about it. We also now talk about about steps to recruiting board members are also in this guide, okay? We talk about the roles of the members. We talk about the role of the president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer. We even talk about committees, all right? The role of the various committees and subchairs in the guide as well. We talk about um, your executive role with the board not just your role as the executive director, but your role as the president or the executive director as it relates to the board is also explained in here. We talk about planning and strategy, developing your strategic plan is covered in here. We talk about setting goals for your organization, your financial goals, right? Your programmatic goals. 
um, your the goals for you to grow and expand your program, okay? Organizational goals. Many of you all started your nonprofit organization really focused on the program. But the program cannot exist without the strength of the organization, right? The program is not the organization. The organization is where the money is raised. The organization is what it uh, connects and grows relationship within the community, okay? And so here we talk about how do you set the goals and objectives? How do you put together the plan and the path for growth? We talk also here about your program and your evaluation. We talk about um, risk management. We talk about fundraising. Oh my gosh, fundraising, right? I mentioned to you earlier, eight streams of revenue. In this guide, I share 10, okay? And we talk about the different sectors of giving. We talk about individuals. We talk about foundations. We talk about corporations. We talk about partnerships and collaborations and even how to find those and how to develop those. We talk also about what motivates people to give. What is your donor persona? Have you ever heard that term that there is an ideal customer persona for any business so that you know how to market to that persona? I talk about your donor personas here. I think I give you almost 16 donor personas, okay? And I explain who they are and what they are. I go into products and services in terms of revenue generation. I talk about in-kind contributions and how to pursue those as well. And understanding how to create your fundraising plan. Also, how do you develop and cultivate relationships with your donor? And then I love this, I love this. We have grant writing tips as well. We talk about understanding the fundraising methods. And one of the things that I'm really, really, really excited about is that we also talk about you got that first gift, right? You got the first gift. Now you got to get the second gift. I even in here have a second gift strategy, right? Many of you who got the first gift and you're like, Jen, they gave one time, but they never gave again. They gave one time, Jen, but they never gave again. I also talk about the second gift strategy. Okay. Understanding your donors. How do you define your target audience? How do you develop a compelling message, right? What do you say to your donors? How do you host fundraisers? How do you develop partnerships and collaborations? All right. Those are things that are in here. How to put together a case for support, right? How do you articulate the case for when you are sending letters or correspondences to corporations and the such, right? Making sure that you are clear about how you are conveying, who you are, what you do, so that they understand it. They've got to understand it before they invest in it, right? So building out a strong case for support is also in here, okay? Uh, we talk about financial management. Oh my gosh. We talk about revenue forecasting. We talk about expense planning. We talk about your budget development. We even talk about reporting and transparency. We're talking about managing cash flow, forecasting cash flow, monitoring cash flow, maintaining adequate reserves. We talk also about your fund accounting, segmentation of your funds. That's really big, um, mostly around grants, okay? Mostly around grants. We talk about what are direct costs, indirect costs, expenses, revenue, balancing your budget. So all of those financial concerns, those um, budgetary concerns, those are really important, particularly when you are looking for or seeking grant funds, right? Or when you are having conversations with your investors or your business sponsors or your partners or your collaborators, really understanding how your budget is put together is really going to be helpful to you. In chapter six, we talk about marketing and communications. We talk about identifying your audience, how highlighting your impact and your outcome, putting together your branding message. We talk about your social media and your online presence and your public relations um, strategies. In chapter seven, we talk about human resources and your volunteer management, right? Really understanding the job descriptions and how do you identify the people that are best suited for those jobs. We talk about training and retaining, training and retaining, training and retaining, right? The best way to retain talent is train them. 
And you as the executive director, as the president, or you uh, along with your board, must really understand what's required and what is expected and how to train the people to be sufficient um, and proficient at their jobs, right? So that's important for you to know. We also talk about employee procedures, and the like. We talk about technology and operations. We talk about access to your organizational needs. We talk about your um, requirements for uh, technology. We talk about integration. We talk about data management and security, right? Understanding the security of your donor's information. We talk about operational efficiency. We talk about collaboration and project management software, right? All these tools that are out here. How do you define which tool is best suited for your organization's need. Chapter nine, we talk about sustainability and growth. Whew, are y'all tired yet? We still got more to go. There is so much in this guide. Oh my gosh. I have put 52 pages together to help you in one place. If you can imagine one place, everything that you need to know about the nonprofit is in this place. And not only that, if you look at this as a workbook, that every time you listen to me, every time you hear me teach, every time you attend a class, every time you listen to my YouTube or you listen to the podcast, you are getting mentoring, right? I am explaining, I am giving um, examples, right? I'm really expounding upon the information that's already in this guide. How do we learn? We learn through repetition. How do we learn? We learn through repetition, right? And the more we know, we listen differently. So I'm really wanting to put the information in your hand so that you all understand the concepts, you all understand what's needed for you to know and to understand so that you can adequately lead your organizations, all right? So when we're talking about sustainability and growth. We talk here about building partnerships and collaborations, which is really a stream of revenue. If you all understood the importance and the power of collaborations and partnerships, oh my gosh, you all will be so much further ahead, ahead right? It's a great way to generate revenue. So we talk about how to identify strategic partners. How do you develop mutual benefits? You don't go into a partnership, honey, where you're giving and they're taking, right? They get, but you get nothing. No, that's not how we go into these things. And so I talk about how do you develop those mutual benefits? We talk about how to scale your program and your impact. We talk about certain creating a culture of innovation. We talk about succession planning. What is succession planning? That means when you retire, your organization and the mission of the work that you have put your hands to continues, okay? We talk about even that. We talk about resources and further learning. There are books, there are websites, there are other resources. There are professional development opportunities, networking tips, whew, all in this guide. I am super excited to be able to offer this guide to you, particularly for those of you that say, Jen, I am stuck. Jen, I am frustrated. Jen, I started, but I don't know what to do next. Or Jen, I want to start a nonprofit and I don't know where to begin, right? This guide is for you. Your best investment in the success and the sustainability of your organization is knowledge. Did you hear what I said? The best investment, the best investment is knowledge. The best investment is knowledge. So listen, I want you all to really put your mind to not only what you want to do, but how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it so that your organization has exactly what is needed to move forward? All right, to move forward. I want you guys to hear, I want you all to listen in to a young woman that I started working with. I met her on TikTok. I met her on TikTok. Um, I want you all to hear her amazing testimony. Hello, um, my name is Brandy Shepard and I am the founder and the CEO of a nonprofit organization called Single Parent Advancement, where we educate, motivate, and support single parents in the areas of financial literacy, career and education, and self-awareness. I'm here to talk to you just about a little bit about my journey. Um, when I first started this organization, let me be the first one to tell you that I had no idea how to run my organization. I had no knowledge of how to run it, how to sustain it, 
um, especially sustain it financially. Um, there were just things that I just didn't know. I didn't realize that there were two components, the operational side of the organization as well as the program side. And because of my lack of knowledge, I heavily push towards the programs and I was all about running the program. So every dime that we got into this organization, it was pushed towards the programs. Um, but I had to then understand and learn the operational portion of it is just as important because that is the component that helps that organization to be sustained. It helps it to run financially if it's strategically um, put together well. So after wasting so much time, wasting so much money on people who are saying they can help take my organization to the next level, help, you know, push it, um, I just became frustrated to the point where I just wanted to dissolve my organization. Um, and yeah, I just was giving up on the thing that I felt like I was purposed for. But it wasn't until I happened to be on TikTok, which at the time I was not a big TikToker, if you will, um, but I did get on TikTok. I kind of searched um, uh, nonprofits in the search engine, and I ended up running across Miss Jean. So I kind of listened to her videos, you know, for quite some time. But it wasn't until one day I sat in on her live, and she was like, some of y'all don't need to be CEOs. And I mean, I promise you that statement alone just hit me right in the gut because I'm like, her point was, you know, the program is only going to go as far as the CEO take it. So I felt like, man, she's talking to me. I'm hindering the growth of my organization because I don't have the knowledge and the skills to push it. Um, so after one session with her, I realized that she was the real deal. <laughs> I realized that she knew her stuff, um, her years and years and years of experience um, really showed through her videos, really showed through our sessions one-on-one. -on -one. And since being with her, I've only been with her now a couple of months. And since being with her, I definitely have found a new life and a new like zeal for my organization she has put together for me proposals on who, how you know what to send out for different um for different uh other organizations who's looking to um basically host my program so she's given me proposals um she informed me about grants because at one point in time I was just so you know gun hold about getting a grant a grant a grant but she's like why are you focused on that one thing that's only going to give you 30 percent of what your budget is you know focus on the other six or seven streams of income that can come in like sponsorships and you know in-kind donations and things of that nature so she helped me to realize that don't just focus on grants you got to look at the bigger picture and get other streams of income coming in she also helped me with my impact. She said, you are running a business. And when you are running a business, you're selling something. So no, I'm not selling burgers or t-shirts or anything. What I'm selling is impact. The, my donors want to see impact. And so she helped me bring that to the forefront of everything. So I just feel like, <laughs> now listen, let me put this disclaimer out there. She gonna give it to you straight, no chaser. For those who knows that term, she's gonna let you know, she's gonna give you raw material, but it's only to push you and to enhance you and grow your organization to be the organization that you are desiring for it to be. But I, my, my only regret is that I wish I would have ran into her sooner so that I didn't have to go through all the hurdles, the ups and downs, lose so much money, lose so much time. Um, so if anybody is looking for help in their organization, I highly, highly recommend that you get with Miss Jen because she is the real deal. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, you guys, listen, I have many more, but I won't bore you with those. If you are really interested in taking your organization to the next level, not just starting, but understanding how to run it, understanding how to manage it, understanding how to fund it, understanding how to grow it, I invite you to get this guide, all right? I invite you to invest in your knowledge and I invite you to get this guide. Again, when you purchase this guide, you get a bonus training. All right. It's either going to be on fundraising, it's going to be on grant writing, 
or it's going to be on the nonprofit startup. If you are un listening to me right now, you also are going to be invited to a 30-day fundraising opportunity with me, me and my team, okay, during the month of April. You get an opportunity to meet with me weekly where you get your questions answered and we're going to be raising money. We're gonna to put together your fundraising strategy, your step-by-steps, your action steps for 30 days. I'm gonna give you 75 days of strategy, 75 days, but we're gonna to be together for 30 days throughout the month of April. All right. If this is of interest to you, I would love to be your coach. I would love to bring you clarity. I would love to help you to stop struggling. I would love for you to really start your organization, not from your passion only for the program, but also the clarity of understanding of how to grow it, how to fund it, how to lead it, how to manage it, how to raise the awareness of it in your community, because that is where your support comes from. All right. We don't perish for lack of money. We perish for lack of knowledge. And it's all of the I don't knows that have you stuck. I don't know how, Jen. I don't know where, Jen. I don't know what, Jen. Those are the things that are keeping you back. And so I want to be able through this guide to really walk through, answer those questions, lift off the veil of confusion and frustrating of you trying to do it on your own. Running a nonprofit is a profession. It's a profession, all right? So it's not something that you just pick up on your own. It is a profession. And it was my job to help and train a thousand organizations nationally and internationally on how to do it. That was my J-O-B, y'all. My job was to help new nonprofit leaders and new nonprofit uh, board members start, grow, and sustain their nonprofit businesses, all right? For those of you all who have been following me for a while, thank you. For those of you all who are new to me, nice to meet you. I hope that you will join the family. Please like, please share, please subscribe, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And let me know if you got the guide. Say, I got it, Jen. I got it, Jen. I got it, Jen. I want to be able to offer you all an opportunity. And let me just throw this in. Everyone who gets the guide is also going to get an opportunity to join me for a VIP Q&A session, right? Where you can come outside of April, where you will have an opportunity to just ask me questions, okay? It's going to be a group opportunity for you to come in. Those of you who get the guide, you will be sent an email to come to a VIP Q&A. All right. I want to say thank you again for everyone for listening, for everyone for following, for everyone for subscribing, for everyone for commenting and sharing your participation in the comments through your through those though those means really help me push this message out. It is my heart and my goal that 2024 will be the last year that people are struggling with starting to start starting growing and sustaining their nonprofit organization. And it would be my pleasure to be your nonprofit coach. Having done the work for over 30 years and been in this business for now almost 38, July will be 38 years. I am happy to share my knowledge, to share my experience, to share my insight, and to help you do the work. I love this work. I love this work. And it would be my pleasure to help you guys be the greatest that you can in your community for the impact that you are sure to bring. But it comes with your understanding, not only how to do the program, but how to sustain and manage the business. All right. Thank you guys. I will see you the next time, the next time that we are together on the Zoom and on the podcast, Nonprofit Nuggets with Jennifer Yarbrough. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.